Hi, I'm Dr. Grindell. I'm uh, from the Division of Hand and Upper Extremity Surgery in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, and we're going to be doing a hand, uh, forearm, and elbow examination today. It's important to take a very thorough history uh, of the patient. Uh, we see patients, uh, young patients, children, all the way up to uh, older patients. We want to know if this is a traumatic problem that recently occurred, if there's a, an acute onset of symptoms, or if this has been more of a, a chronic situation. We often see uh, degenerative problems, uh, tendinopathies, nerve compression, um, uh, joint abnormalities. Uh, so it's very important to take a thorough history, get the timing of the problem down, see what makes it worse or, or aggravates it, if there are anything that helps it, um, see if they've tried anything such as splinting, anti-inflammatories, or other treatments that may have been recommended by uh, their referring doctor. Um, so. Symptoms uh, that I look for are we're looking at the nervous system, the vascular system, we're looking at uh, the uh, m tendons, ligaments, muscles, and bones and joints. So uh, as far as the nerves are concerned, is there any numbness or tingling? Uh, are there any shooting pains? Um, as far as the blood vessels are concerned, uh, is there a, a spot that's cool? Is there a change in color? Um, does cold exposure aggravate the problem? Um, is there stiffness? Is there swelling? Are there, is there a mass uh, that they're concerned about? Uh, as far as the tendons are concerned, are, are there catching or triggering of the fingers or the wrist? Are there certain motions that aggravate it? Uh, these are all things that, that we'd be interested in evaluating. Um, to uh, examine the wrist and the hand, the first thing I'll do is I'll observe. Um, and we want to see both hands usually have them disrobed at least up to the elbows or arms, so a short sleeve shirt would be fine. Or if they have a, a gown on, uh, if they have uh, other bulkier clothing, you'd want to put a gown on them. Um, look at both sides. We compare color, temperature by feeling the area. We check the pulses, the radial pulse here, the ulnar pulse here. Again, on the other side, the radial pulse and the ulnar pulse. After we've checked the pulses, we want to check for capillary refill. So I'll just blanch and see how long it takes for the color to return. And normal would be somewhere around two seconds. If that's delayed beyond that, that would be a problem. A good place to check that is in the nail bed, right here, nice and pink. It blanches white, comes back uh, to, to pink rather quickly. You can also check a brachial pulse as we come up the arm at the elbow. Patients complaining of something like an infection or a tumor, there's a mass, uh, or you're concerned you'll want to feel for uh, lymph nodes, and you can feel for lymph nodes about the elbow. These are the epitrochlear lymph nodes. We want to check range of motion. So we simply extend, flex. On flexion of the elbow, the patient should be able to take their thumb and touch their ipsilateral shoulder. Same thing on both sides. Okay, so we're comparing side to side. Next, we want to check with the elbows tucked in at the body, the forearm rotation. Pronation, supination. Check that they're symmetric and that it goes through a full range of motion. With the elbows on the pad, we check for wrist flexion and we check for wrist extension. If a patient has an arthritic wrist or a problem with their wrist, you would expect that they would have limited range of motion. We check for digit motion. We, flex, we extend the fingers all the way up, and we flex the fingers all the way down, and we want to be able to show that we can flex the fingers down to the distal palmar crease. So I'll draw that here. That represents the metacarpal phalangeal joint. The patient should be able to flex down to that. The thumb should be able to flex to the metacarpal head of the little finger, which is right here. So we can demonstrate that again. Okay. When we're suspecting that there is tendonitis, whether it's at the elbow, the wrist, or the hand, we want to first isolate the tendons that are a problem. On the elbow, there's the lateral epicondyle, which is in this region here, and the extensor muscles originate from there. Direct palpation to that area and resisted wrist extension will elicit pain 
at the extensor origin right here. When we're looking at medial epicondylitis, we see the medial epicondyle here. The flexor pronator muscles come off of the medial epicondyle. Patients with golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis would have pain in this region with resisted wrist flexion and forearm pronation. Pain right there. Talk about other tendonitis in the wrist now. There are six dorsal compartments of the wrist. The first compartment is right here. The second compartment is right here. The third compartment comes around like this. The fourth compartment is right here. The fifth compartment here and the sixth compartment here. Each one of those compartments has tendons running in them. Any of those tendons can become inflamed. The most common of these would be Decker veins, stenosine tenosynovitis. That is tendonitis involving the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus as they run through the first dorsal wrist compartment. A Finkelstein's test is performed by putting the patient's thumb and gently, ownerly deviating, putting stretch on those tendons. A positive test is elicited if there is pain with that maneuver. This in the differential for radial sided tendonitis would be Decker veins, followed by intersection syndrome where the first dorsal compartment and the second dorsal compartment overlap. To test for that, we extend the wrist and I re he resists radial deviation while I palpate six centimeters proximal to the radial styloid in the intersection point. A positive response would be painful at that spot. Patients with radial sided tendonitis can also have symptoms of thumb or digit triggering. They would, when they flex or extend their finger, it might catch on them and they'll feel a pop. Patients with digital triggering will have pain and a nodule often along the flexor tendon at the level of the A1 pulley of the fibrosseous sheath. This is demonstrated by this purple line along the fingers. That's just proximal to the metacarpal phalangeal joint. In direct palpation to that area, while the patient flexes and extends their finger, will elicit a painful response and you can feel the clicking or triggering. When examining the wrist for flexor carpi radialis tendonitis or flexor carpi ulnaris tendonitis, the wrist is Maybe we'll use this wrist here. The wrist is flexed up and we resist. Resist me. We see this tendon. Can you see that? This tendon is the flexor carpi radialis right here. Pain. There's a tunnel that it runs through just at the level of the scaphoid tubercle. Resisted wrist flexion and palpating in that region will elicit a painful response. The flexor carpi ulnaris tendon runs along here and a similar situation occurs. This is not a common problem, but resisted flexion and ulnar deviation will elicit a positive response in that region. The flexor carpi ulnaris tendon has a sesamoid bone called the pisiform. The pisiform sits right here. It gives the FCU tendon a mechanical advantage in wrist flexion. Patients can have pisotriquetral arthritis this would be elicited with resistant ulnar deviation and flexion while palpating on the pisiform, grinding the pisiform bone into the triquetrum. <clears throat> We've talked about Decker veins in the first compartment, intersection syndrome here at the intersection point between the first and second compartment. Lesser uh, common tendinopathies would be extensor carp, excuse me, extensor pollicis longus as it runs along the thumb, around Lister's tubercle in the radius, and up the forearm. Resisted thumb extension while palpating in that region will elicit a response. The tendons to the fingers, resist me, come down through the fourth compartment. Resisted finger extension while palpating in that region will elicit a response.